Hello my soccer universe, the last weekend ahead of the international break was quite a big weekend. We had four points for my favorite teams, Milan Blair, Lask, with luck, but that's beside the point. You'll find the review videos for Austria and Italy on my channel already. But we had a major weekend in the Premier League where suddenly Liverpool have a big gap up top. Same thing goes for Germany, we have quite some interesting games in France. We had a Pyrrhic victory for Real Madrid, Barcelona losing, and we had a mega weekend in Portugal. But we'll start our journey in the Eredivisie, where also the leaders open a little bit of a gap. In the Eredivisie, Ajax's momentum was a little bit halted with a 2-2 at 20. And this was also the Michel Vlop show who gave Twente the lead with a beautiful shot in the 42nd minute. In the second half, Klaassen equalizes. In the 59th half, in the 65th, Vlop gives Twente the lead again, swiftly equalized them by Traore. It always seemed that Ajax could turn it around and get the win, but Twente's struck back was a really good game. The day before, we then saw already PSV beating Nak Breda 3 0 away from home, Pepe, Sabari, and Pakayoko scoring. So, again, PSV extend the lead on top of the table. And just before the 20 Ajax team, Feyenoord got a resounding 4 1 win at Almere City. Two more notable results Herrenwein get a 1 0 win over the go ahead Eagles, and Willem Dwey beat at Z 2 1 away from home. With Wolves beating Southampton 2-0 and Ipswich going to Spurs and winning their 2-1, we have no winless teams anymore in the Premier League, which of course is a big story. No, it's not. It was the perfect weekend for Liverpool, who are now five points adrift on top of the table. Thanks to, first off, Brighton coming back to beat Manchester City 2-1. It's a fourth loss in a row for Pep Guardiola that never has happened in his entire career as a coach. Quite remarkable stuff. They had a halftime lead through Holland. However, in the second half, the Brighton turnaround came through Joao Pedro in a really weird goal where everyone was trying to get the ball and it falls to him, he puts it in. And five minutes later, by O'Reilly in his first Premier League game. That's very nicely set up the stage for Liverpool at home at Anfield against Aston Villa top clash and it was corner kicks that really undid Villa because both goals came from Villa corner kicks that then just resulted in quick counter attacks by Liverpool in the 20th minute Nunez after Salah scores, scores the first one he had another big chance if not two and then very late on Liverpool only had a 1-0 lead and it seemed like you know Villa is not really in the game but if they put one back it could get tied Liverpool had plenty of chances to actually double the lead in the end it's Mohamed Salah who again gets a great goal it's 2 new Liverpool, as I said, 5 points on top of the table. Could this be their year? Fulham underlined their good form with a 2 nil win at Crystal Palace. In his last game as a caretaker, Van Nistelrooy beats Leicester 3-0, also the first team that he beat. We had Forrest's run stalked by Newcastle. Yes, they had a 1-0 halftime lead, but in the second half, Joel Linton, Isaac and Tonali completely running riot, winning 3-1. And at last, we had a big game between Chelsea and Arsenal. First half, we can more or less forget about it. Second half was a little bit better, but Arsenal, you can tell with Odegaard in the lineup, there's a little bit more meaning to everything. He also assists a goal, goal by Martinelli. However, it's then a wide range shot by Neto that give Chelsea the equalizer. Arsenal thought that they might have deserved a win, but I think overall the draw was an okay result. Without convincing a lot, on Saturday everything turned very well for Bayern. They themselves get a 1-0 away win at St. Pauli, thanks to a beautiful Jamal Musiala goal. And then, defending champions Leverkusen only managed a 1-1 draw against Bochum. Against last place Bochum, a terrible team. Yes, they had a lead through Schick, but very late on Bochum managed an equalizer. And it seems all the good luck that Leverkusen had in the last season is not coming back to bite them. Meanwhile, the other supposed challenger in Dortmund suffered a 3-1 loss at Mainz. Another team in the bottom half of the table surely didn't help that Emre Can was sent off after 27 minutes. Then Mainz take a lead. Uh, Dortmund can even equal us through a Gear C penalty. However, just before the half, Mainz re-establishes lead and adds a third one. We saw then also nil-nil draws between Gladbach and Leipzig. A uh, draw for Leipzig that definitely puts Marco Rose under pressure. And we also had an Augsburg and Hoffenheim play out a nil-nil draw. Oh, meaning that coach Pellegrino Matarazzi has been officially sacked now by Hoffenheim. The game of the weekend though surely was Stuttgart 2, Frankfurt 3, an absolute mad game with a mad finish 
And it could have gone so differently for Stuttgart if Demirovic would have converted his penalty. However, then against the run of play, arguably, Etikite, after Marmouche cross, had it in to give Frank for the lead just before the half. Brown and then Marmouche himself by the hour mark had established a 3 0 lead for Frankfurt. Etikite and Marmouche definitely one of the best striking partnerships at the moment in Europe. And Frankfurt, one of the teams of the moment as well. However, Stuttgart came back. They get a goal back in the 86th minute, then in the 90th, they make it 2 3. They even thought they had an equalizer. However, it was an offside call. Absolutely mad game. And to finish off the round, Wolfsburg also got a rare win, a 3 1 at Heidenheim, which definitely is conditioned that Heidenheim had to play in Europe. The Ligue 1 weekend started out with a bang when Osea went to Marseille and led 3 0 at the halftime with the latter two goals coming just before the halftime, sending the in all kinds of rage. It ends 1 3 as Mason Green pulls one back. But things are not looking right for OM, especially at home. Quite the opposite story for their southern rivals Monaco, who go down 1 0 in Strasbourg and then a very late turnaround. Win it for Monaco. Ben Seguir converts the penalty in the 79th. 10 minutes later, he gets the go ahead goal in stoppage time. Ilinkena. At a third. Are the Hütter's men back on the good track? Meanwhile, table toppers PSG are very unperturbed by the whole thing. They go to Angers, lead at the halftime 4 0. Lee Kang in getting a brace, Bradley Barcola getting a brace, and then and the journalist had the tenacity to ask coach Luis Enrique, why did you concede two goals in stoppage time? Yeah, but the game was won. To lose his 2 0 win at a really bad Rennes side is in so far remarkable as the coach was fired. And who is back? Jorge Sampoli. That will be quite some action in Ligue 1 with him. Of course, we need to have a Keito Nakamura watch. Stadra back to winning ways, winning 3 0 at Le Havre. And Keito Nakamura, former last player, of course, scoring the second goal in the process before a Le Havre player was sent off. And finally, a Lacazette goal gives Olympique Lyonnais the 1 0 win over Saint Etienne in the Rhone Derby at a rocking atmosphere. Lyon also orienting themselves towards a European spot, possibly a Champions League spot for the next season. After two damning defeats in the league and in the Champions League, Real Madrid are back to winning ways, beating Osasuna 4-0. However, it could prove to be a Pyrrhic victory because Eden Militao is out with an ACL injury. Right after that injury, Vinny Jr. gets the lead for Real Madrid. Jude Bellingham gets his first goal of the season in the second half. Vinny adds two more. Truly was an emotional win for Villarreal, a 3-0 over Alaves, with of course a lot of tribute to the Comunidad de Valencia that has been so hard hit by the flooding. The win is also good for Villarreal because they keep up there and they might be the fourth team to go into the Champions League this season from Spain. Sunday saw a highly entertaining 2-2 draw between Betis and Celta. Celta having twice the lead and then in the 94th minute Bartra gets the equalizer for Betis. Meanwhile, Giuliano Simeone assists Julian Alvarez in Atleti's 1-0 win over Mallorca. Quite an important win for them and coach Simeone is surely proud that his son is in there, although he tries to downplay the family connection and really wants to emphasize that his son is in his team on merit. We also almost had an upset in Valladolid when Moro gave Valladolid the lead in the 79th minute. A little bit against the run of play, however, Guruceta with a brilliant goal equalizes in stoppage time to salvage a point for Bilbao. Girona also get a 1-0 away win at Getafe. And in the evening, Real Sociedad for once bring home a great home performance, beating Barcelona 1-0 with a well-taken goal by Geraldo Becker. Barcelona overall really bad, not having really a shot on goal. However, the big talking point was, of course, the go-ahead goal in the 13th minute by Robert Lewandowski was called off because his big toe was barely offside. But... It was offside, and while the second defeat of the season might hurt Barcelona, they still have a relatively good lead in the table. And finally, we had an absolute super weekend in Portugal with the top six facing each other. It started with Santa Clara hosting Vitória Guimarães getting a 1-0 win and paired with other results. This means that Santa Clara moved now up from sixth into fourth place. Could they end up in Europe as a promoted team? 
Ruben Amorim's last game as a sporting coach was a true classic. At halftime, they're 2-0 down to a Braga team. Twice Orta scoring, twice the defense not looking good. It seemed like they overcome by the occasion. However, the second half saw a real turnaround for sporting. They bring on Morita and within three minutes Morita scores the goal that cuts the Braga lead in half and from that moment on it was all sporting. There was a chance where Jokeres just barely misses across to pull it into the empty net but it was not Jokeres that was scoring goals. It was all Danish time. Hulmond gets the equalizer in the 81st minute and the Morita assists harder another day in the 89th with a very well placed, not hard, but very well placed shot to give Sporting the lead and then he adds another one in stoppage time. A mad game and Sporting are still very much on top of the table. Even better, they now enjoy a six point lead on top of the table because City rivals Benfica beat Porto 4-1 and there was a whole lot of needle in El Clasico because Porto last time around beat them rather handily. This time around, Benfica was out for blood. They were the more active team. Created chances high, it took until the 30th minute until Carreras gave Benfica the lead. Porto though, very efficient in ahead of goal and Samo before the half gets an equalizer and it was always threatening that Porto could actually steal something there. However, in the second half, a deeper from Aurisness finds Di Maria who re-establishes the Mefica lead, then an own goal a few minutes later makes it 3-1 and a Di Maria penalty gives the Mefica fans the big win that they wanted against their big rivals. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!